G'day and welcome to my Lithium Battery Masterclass video series for 2024. In this video, part two, I'm gonna go in depth and compare different lithium battery types, focusing particularly on lithium iron phosphate. Now this is need to know info that's gonna help you stay educated and avoid misinformation. In part one, I talked about the things that help you choose the right battery for your setup. Things like battery size and shape, battery power capacity, power output, as well as ease of use and ease of setup. So if you're still not sure what battery you need, make sure you check out that video as well. As always, I'm also going to compare everything to an AGM lead acid battery, which until recently in the last couple of years was the most popular battery for camping, full driving and outdoor recreation if you needed a secondary auxiliary or house battery. A 98 amp hour AGM battery is roughly 25 kilos and offers about 49 usable amp hours. That's going down to about 50% of the battery's capacity, which is what we recommend. If you did repeatedly cycle the battery down to 50%, you could do that about 900 times, also known as 900 cycles. So if you wanted a battery with a similar amount of capacity, you'd be looking at a 60 amp hour lithium. It has 48 usable amp hours of capacity. The difference is it weighs about a quarter as much and is about half the size. It's also a very similar price, which means the lithium iron phosphate is such a great choice. If you wanted a battery that was about the same size, you could opt for a 120 amp hour lithium battery, which would give you roughly double the usable capacity and it's still about half the weight. And if you wanted a battery that was roughly the same weight as an AGM battery, you could opt for a 300 amp hour lithium, which is gonna give you a huge amount more power. Not only that, but lithium iron phosphate batteries offer more than double the cycle life of an AGM battery. And that's when you use them all the way down to 20% remaining. Both AGM and lithium iron phosphate batteries are sealed and safe to use in your vehicle. They're both built and tested to withstand vibrations. But lithium iron phosphate is now getting so popular because it offers what many consider to be the best balance between safety, lightweight, high power output, long life and affordability. But why lithium iron phosphate and not other lithium types? Well, let's get into the explanation and comparison. First, a little refresher on what a lithium battery is. Lithium batteries can be different shapes, different sizes, different chemistries, they can have different electrolytes, or they can even have different internal electrochemical reactions or mechanisms in how they function. So let's take a look at a chart of all batteries. We've got batteries at the top, then under that primary and secondary, also known as single use and rechargeable batteries. Under that, you'd have your different basic chemistries like zinc, lithium, nickel or silver, or lead acid, lithium and nickel. Under that, you'd have specific different lithium mechanisms, the most common being lithium ion, but then there's also lithium sulfur, lithium air and lithium metal with different electrochemical reactions, meaning they work in slightly different ways. We're gonna focus on lithium ion rechargeable batteries, which would branch off from here. And under there, we'd have the familiar lithium ion phosphate, as well as other lithium options. The most common usually including cobalt, like lithium cobalt oxide, manganese, like lithium manganese oxide, or nickel, such as lithium nickel manganese cobalt oxide, or lithium nickel cobalt aluminium oxide. And then even under that level, there are different electrolytes, like liquid, polymer, or solid. There's a lot to it, so let's focus on the most common category, that is rechargeable, lithium ion batteries with a liquid electrolyte. In this example, lithium iron phosphate. Okay, now I wanna quickly demonstrate and explain what a lithium ion battery means. It's so called because it uses a lithium ion in the electrochemical process. And without getting too deep into inorganic chemistry, let's take a look at this. If I had one atom of the element lithium, it would have one orbiting electron in its outer shell. In that sense, it's a little unstable because elements prefer to have a full outer shell. And the easiest way of achieving that 
is by losing that one electron. An electron itself is negatively charged. So when the atom loses the electron, the lithium that remains becomes positively charged and is now referred to as a lithium ion. An ion is an atom that has gained or lost electrons resulting in a net electrical charge. Batteries are designed so that this resulting lithium ion can travel through the electrolyte, which in this case is a liquid, but the electron cannot. Instead, it's forced to travel through the attached circuit while discharging to move from the anode to the cathode. As electrons flow through the circuit, they provide the electrical energy needed to power your devices. While charging the battery, electrons flow from the charger through the wiring and force the lithium ions to move back to the other end of the battery, where they combine and are stored ready to be discharged again. A half-charged battery has moved only half of the electrons and lithium ions into storage ready for use. So it's important not to confuse lithium ion, I-O-N, with lithium iron, I-R-O-N. Lithium ion describes the way that the battery works internally, while lithium iron describes the materials used in that battery. Now let's take a look at a chart that compares all these different battery types. I first used this back in 2021, so it'll be interesting to see what's changed. Using each of these different materials in lithium batteries changes their internal structure and performance, but doesn't change them being a lithium ion battery. For example, if you add cobalt, you get a battery that has higher capacity, lighter weight and smaller size, meaning it's more energy dense, but it's also less stable. By contrast, using manganese in a lithium battery means that it's more stable and safe and allows for higher current outputs. However, it's also slightly heavier and doesn't have as long a life. Combining them both and adding nickel as well, meaning you've got lithium, nickel, manganese, cobalt, gives you a battery that's sort of the best of both worlds. Longer lifetime, better power output, and more energy dense. It's safer than lithium cobalt oxide, but it's still not as safe as lithium manganese oxide. Adding aluminium to nickel and cobalt gives you a lightweight, high power battery, but it's still less stable with less cycle life than other batteries. And of course, using iron and phosphate results in a battery that's not as lightweight as these other types. However, it is much more stable, safer, and has a much longer life. Finally, there's lithium titanate oxide, which offers really safe, really stable output, really long life, fast charge and discharge. However, it's much heavier and bigger than other lithium battery types. It's for all these reasons that lithium iron phosphate really is in that sweet spot, particularly for vehicle-based outdoor recreation setups or for energy storage. Sure, if you had a phone or a camera, then a lightweight, energy-dense battery might make sense. But in a vehicle where weight is less of a concern and safety is more important, lithium iron phosphate is the ideal choice. Some of the newer batteries like lithium sulfur could theoretically have watt hours per kilo of up to 500. And sulfur is a cheaper and more abundant element. So maybe in the next decade or so, we'll see some more advances in that area. The first big change we see is that the cost of lithium ion phosphate has come way down so that it's now on par with many of these other lithium types, making lithium ion phosphate the ideal choice. So the materials inside the battery is what changes these different types of lithium ion batteries. And again, goes to show why lithium ion phosphate is just so good at least for the moment, until we get some more development on some of those futuristic lithium technologies. However, it's all good to have a super lightweight, super high power and ultra energy dense lithium battery, but we need to make sure that it's safe and stable because packing all that power into a small lightweight battery means it could be highly unstable and highly reactive. In the next episode, I'm gonna talk more about different types of lithium ion phosphate cells, different shapes and sizes, as well as their limitations, their best conditions for usage, and how to get the most out of them in terms of life cycles and output.